All right. We're going to pray this morning to start with. All right. Okay, so let's pray. God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are faithful, Lord God. We thank you that you are on the throne. We thank you, Lord God, that you... um, Yeah, that you're just our saviour, you're powerful, Lord God, you're the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And Lord God, we, we just pray this morning that we will all just open our hearts, Lord God, to hear what you have to say to us this morning. Lord God, I just pray that you will speak through me, that you'll help me to communicate clearly, Lord God. I thank you that you, uh, in our weakness, you're strong, Lord God. So Lord, we just, um, we look to you this morning, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you will just speak to us and encourage each of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Every time I say yes to this, I wonder why. (laughs) When it actually comes time for those people that know me, this is not my comfort zone. But I I only say yes if I feel like God's given me something to say. So let's get into it today. Um, Our topic is knowing Jesus. And I'm not focusing on any particular one quality of Jesus this morning, but I'm going to be focusing on, I guess, why it's important to know him. Now, obviously, there is the knowing him when we are saved, and that's obviously the height of importance of knowing that he's our saviour and that he forgives our sins and that we can live forever with him, but that's not my focus today. My focus is on continuing to get to know him. He doesn't change, but our understanding of him can change. And that's what I want to focus on today. And the one thing I guess that I'm focusing on about Jesus is the fact that he's worthy. In every circumstance, in every situation, no matter what's going on in our lives, that he's worthy of our praise. The more we know him and who he is, the more we realise that he's worthy of our praise. Pastor Fiona, the last few uh, weeks has been uh, calling us to arise And I really feel like God is calling us up, that he's calling us to mature as a a church. And I got this picture as I was praying about this message um, of a tree. Well, it was actually all of us, but people individually and these tree trunks in their spirit. And God was just showing me that he is strengthening our trunks, if you like, our tree trunks so that we would be able to stand firm in trials and in um, situations of life. That he wants our roots to go down deep. That he's strengthening us so that we won't be so battered by life storms. Yesterday we went to um, Hobart, down and back in the day, which is always fun, especially with the roadworks. And we had our learner driver driving us most of the way. So I had a lot of time to sit and look out the window (laughs) <laughs> and there were lots of trees as we were going past. And um, God was talking to me about showing me there were some trees that had like really thin trunks and even the slightest breeze that were going from side to side. There were other trees that had really thick trunks. And it didn't matter how strong the wind was, the branches might move. Some branches might even in strong storms fall but the trunk stayed still. It didn't move. And I felt like God, what God was saying to us is that he wants us to get to a place where he has strengthened our spirits, he's strengthened our trunks enough that no matter the storm, you know, we might, we feel the feelings. I've talked about that before. And that's, please hear me, that's okay. And I know especially this morning, there are people that, have, that are hurting And I get that and I want to be respectful of that. So I'm not saying you can't feel the feelings. I'm not saying you can't feel the hurt. But what I'm saying is that when our trunks are strong, we can feel that. But we don't doubt who God is. We don't doubt who that he loves us. We don't doubt that he's good. We we need to get to a place where that part of our spirit is strong. That no matter the storm, that's not wavering. Um, I'm going to read you a verse, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 to 8. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. 
They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. I feel like that's what God wants, one thing God wants to talk to us about this morning. That if our roots go down deep in who God is, in the fact that he's worthy, then in the middle of the drought, in the middle of the heat, whatever it is, that we can stay strong and stay producing fruit. I know we've heard a lot in recent times about the fact that in this life we'll have trials and sufferings. And for me, it's all the more reason to know who Jesus is deep in our hearts, to be able to hold on to him, to be able to trust him through all of life's seasons. Hebrews 2, verses 4, four sorry, chapter 4. What am I saying? Number 2 is next to my second scripture. It's not Hebrews 2, it's Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16 says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most." We're so blessed, church, to have a God who knows what we're going through, who has experienced it himself, who overcame it, and is now in heaven, seated on the throne, interceding for us. He knows what we need, and it says that he'll give us what we need when we need it most. So we can trust him in all of life's seasons. He's been through it all. He knows what we need. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. So many little bookmarks here. Oh, this one's hidden. Nope. Getting there, church. Here we go. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. So the Bible doesn't just talk about us going through our trials. It talks about rejoicing in them. So let me finish reading that. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. How do we do that? We've talked about this a bit, but how do we consider it joy? Romans 5, 3 talks about rejoicing when we run into problems. And as a life group recently, we've been talking about what does that look like in real life though? What does it look like to rejoice in trials? It's easy to stand up and say, we should have joy when we um, experience a trial. It's an opportunity for joy, but what does it actually look like? For me, when I hear the word rejoicing and joy, I used to think about, you know, somebody jumping around, yippee, and cheering. I don't think that's what God's talking about necessarily. I think... For me, the key to remaining joyful in the hard times, and I'm preaching to myself here, church, I don't have this all together, (laughs) please don't think I do, Um, is that in the trials and things is to keep our eyes fixed on him, to keep focusing on who he is, on the fact that he's worthy of our praise, full stop, regardless of anything else that's going on, that he's still worthy. I think the joy is referring to the fact that we have, as I read before, that high priest who knows what we're going through, who can give us peace, who can give us comfort, who can give us strength. Um, For me, in the last, well, in the last couple of months, there's been a situation happening and um, at the end of last week, last weekend, the beginning of the week, I was really struggling with this situation and I've talked before about my personality I can go to worry quite easily and um, um, God is talking to me about it I don't have it under control and I happened to be walking the dog on the beach it was raining so there was nobody else around so that was perfect and I was just talking to God about this situation because in my mind I'd already gone to the 
well, if that happens, then this will happen and then that will happen and then how will I deal with that and what will, ha- what will happen there? And so I was walking along the beach and I was really having a bit of a whinge to God, if I was honest, and saying, I don't understand what you're doing and why is this happening? And I actually said, I said to him, I don't think, I'm not strong enough to carry that. And straight away he said to me, I didn't ask you to. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> got it, <laughs> thanks. But so God was saying to me, I didn't ask you to carry that burden. You're going way ahead of me. You're going way down this path. I'm here with you in this moment right now. Give that to me. Let me give you what you need for right now. Whatever happens in the future, I'll be there too. But don't get ahead of me. Don't go down that path without me. I didn't ask you to carry it. I'll carry it for you. So I think that's where the joy comes from. Knowing that we have a saviour that we can turn to, that we can express how we feel, that he is merciful to us in it and he'll give us what we need. So regardless of anything that's going on, he's worthy of all our praise. Revelation 5, 11 to 13 says, Then I looked again and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and the elders and they sang in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. They sang blessing and honour and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. I think if it's good enough for the angels, if it's good enough for everything on the earth to be singing holy, holy, to be singing worthy is your name, to be saying all blessing, all honour, all glory and power belong to you, then it's good enough for me in my circumstances. If we focus on who Jesus is, what he did for us, the pain he suffered, he's worthy of our all, even if he never did another thing for me, he's worthy because he's rescued me and given me salvation. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began, but he's now revealed him to you in these last days. I just think as we're coming up to Easter, we need to focus our hearts, we need to focus our eyes on Jesus and who he is and the fact that he's worthy no matter what. No matter what's going on around us, whether we're having a good day, a bad day, whether we're in the middle of a massive storm. A few weeks before Pastor Jeff asked me to preach, I was listening to a Spotify playlist in the car, one of those ones that says you've listened to this so now you might like this song. (laughs) And a song came on that I hadn't heard before. It's called Worthy of My Song. I listened to the lyrics and immediately it resonated with me. And I was crying out to God going, that's what I want my life to be. That's how I want to go through life. I want to live like that. I'm going to read you some of the lyrics in a minute. And straight away, God said to me, this is your next sermon. I'm worthy. I was like, I'm not being asked to preach. So, But yeah, I was like, well, okay, if I get asked, I'll do it. So, darn it. <laughs> um, so, here I am. But I... I do feel like um, that's what God's calling us to, to recognise that he's worthy no matter what. I'm going to read you some of the words because I, for me, they're really powerful. And then I'm just going to share just a couple of uh, points that, I, that God was talking to me about as I listened to the lyrics. It says, I'm going to sing till my heart starts changing. I'm going to worship till I mean every word. Because the way I feel... And the fear I'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve. I give you my worship. You still deserve it. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my song. I'll pour out my praises in blessing and breaking. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my song. 
Then it goes on uh, later on and it starts singing, When I sat by that hospital bed, you were worthy. When she could barely lift her head, you were worthy. After all those tears were shed, you were worthy. I'll never stop singing your praise. In the blessing and the pain, you are worthy. Whether you say yes or no or wait, you are worthy. Through it all, I choose to say you are worthy. I'll never stop singing your praise. For me, that's how I want to live my life. That's how I want to go through life. I'm not saying I've got it all together yet, but I want to go through my life that no matter what part of the spectrum between blessing and breaking I feel like I'm in, that I can offer him my praise. That doesn't mean that I will never feel like I'm falling apart on the inside. It doesn't mean I'll never experience the emotion, but it says I can choose to say you are worthy. I think it's a key to, to strengthening our foundation is realising that he doesn't change. He doesn't change, so therefore what he deserves doesn't change. I was... Um, I saw a thing just this morning um, by Stephen Furtick, just a little clip, and he said, feelings have their place, but they aren't on the throne. And I was like, that is such a good way to put it. Feelings have their place, but they're not on the throne. Jesus is on the throne. So for me, the main points that God was talking to me about from this um, song particularly was that there is power in our worship. We don't have to feel it. We don't have to come into church and go, gee, I feel like worshipping God today. Sometimes we do and that's amazing and that's good. But sometimes we don't. We come in and we go, oh, I'm tired or I've had a bad week or this is all going on and I don't feel like worshipping. We can choose to anyway. That, that song was saying, I'm going to worship till I mean every word. I'm going to sing till my heart starts changing. Because the way I feel doesn't change who you are or what you deserve. Sometimes we've got to take our eyes off our circumstances. And it's hard, I know. Um, Hebrews 13 verses 14 to 15 says this. Let me find it. For this world is not our permanent home. We're looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. It's sometimes it's a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice costs you something. I was watching the worship team up here this morning and they did an amazing job and I know that was a sacrifice this morning. You know, they're not immune to feelings either, <laughs> but they get up here and they put that aside and they focus their eyes on him. It's about taking our eyes off our situation and focusing him on Jesus. Hebrews 13, 8 says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. If he was worthy of our praise in the good times, he's worthy of our praise in the bad times. If he's worthy of our praise yesterday, he's worthy of our praise today and tomorrow as well. Um, sacri yeah, sacrifice of praise costs us something. We don't worship because of how we feel. We worship because of who he is. And that hasn't changed. Um, a really powerful story I'm going to share with you about that, and I've asked permission <laughs> to be for sharing it, is about five and a half years ago now, I was, went to Hobart with a friend uh, for an appointment. And long story short, but I ended up sitting in a room with them while they were told that they had cancer. Now, obviously, that wasn't the day we'd planned. We'd planned to go down, have a little have the appointment, go shopping, go out for lunch and come home. It didn't turn into that. And so we sat there and she got told this news. Obviously devastating, obviously scary. Um, she got told what her future would look like involving, you know, surgery and chemo and radiation and all these big scary words. And anyway, after a few hours... Um, we were allowed to leave. And so you can imagine the car trip home. <laughs> uh, it was a pretty sombre affair in the car. And I still can remember the exact place we were on the road. We were... It was silent. I'd said anything I knew to say, which wasn't very much. And um, we had some worship music playing. I think we were both crying as we were just leaving Hobart. And suddenly I hear her voice next to me saying, God is still good. 
God is still good. God is still good. Now, it was quiet. And if we talked to her, and it impacted me incredibly. I cried more. I get emotional every time I think about it. Because she was in that situation, facing the darkest storm of her life. And she could still say, God is good. Now, whether she was reminding herself, whether she was saying it until she believed it, it doesn't matter. She still chose to worship. She chose to say, I'm focusing on my God and he's still good. Did she still have to walk through that journey? Absolutely. Was it hard? I'm sure it was incredibly hard. But she had that heart, that God is still good no matter what. He's with me in the middle of this. And I get inspired by that all the time. That when I'm facing things, that God is still good. And it doesn't matter how I feel. He's still good and he's still with us. The other thing, the other point I want to make is that there is a power in a predetermined choice. It says, uh, through it all, I choose to say you are worthy. If we've made a predetermined choice in our hearts that he is worthy and I'm going to praise him and I'm going to uh, be grateful and I'm going to thank him, then we don't have to think too much about that decision when we're in the hard times. So I relate it to like, you know, we can make a choice. For example, as a family, we made a choice that we're going to be here on a Sunday morning. We're going to be in the house of God. Unless we're away on holidays or we're sick, we're going to be here. So therefore, on Sundays, I don't have to wake up and go, do I feel like going to church today? I'm a bit tired. Maybe I'll sleep in because I've already chosen. I've already chosen that I'm going to be here. I can choose to be thankful and I can choose to do it in the good times and it makes it easier in the harder times. I relate it to um, back a few years ago when Rebecca and I were doing taekwondo and you would practice the same patterns, the same moves, the same um, punches, kicks, blocks, etc. over and over and over. They tried to teach us self-defence about what do you do if somebody, you know, grabs you or by the hair or by the shirt or whatever and you would spend 10, 15 minutes just somebody grabs you, you do the move. Somebody grabs you again, you do the move. The idea being that if you practice it in times that aren't stressful, when you don't need it, you're just in a gym practicing, you create this muscle memory so that when you are in times of stress or danger, if you ever had to use it, your body would just know what to do. I think that's the same with our relationship with God. We've got to build these foundations. We've got to build this um, muscle memory of being thankful of turning up, being in his house, of reminding our spirit that God is good all the time so that when we do face the storms, when we are in the hard times, our spirit can just go back to it. It's got that muscle memory of knowing. We're not trying to learn it. We're not trying to put it into place. We're not trying to create a habit of turning up at church because it's important to feed our spirits Uh, when we're in the middle of the storm. We've already done that beforehand in the good times. I'm going to um, read you one last scripture so the worship team can come back. Um, And then we're going to spend a little bit of time of worshipping. And I just want to encourage us this morning that we can choose now to take our eyes off our problems Even in the middle of, I've been here in church before and gone, I don't feel like worshipping. There's this situation going on or this situation going on. And sometimes we have to choose to do it through the tears, through the pain. Um, God's not worried by that. It's more for our benefit in that it helps us to refocus on the fact that he's in control and that he's all-powerful and that he's the king of kings. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 4 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, 
disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Let us be encouraged this morning, church, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. That he had a joy set before him. We have joy set before us too. We have the joy of knowing that we can be in his presence forever. So therefore, let us choose to take our eyes off our situation this morning and to focus on him because he's worthy.